Denying the antecedent is one of the most common forms of propositional fallacies, along with affirming the consequent. To explain it, we must delve a bit into the classic form of the modus tollens argument, which is a perfectly valid argument, by the way. A modus tollens has the following structure. If P, then Q. Not Q, therefore not P. With an example now. If the dog sees a burglar, he barks. The dog did not bark, therefore he didn't see a burglar. Sounds legit, doesn't it? It is. Now the fallacious version. If P, then Q. Not P, therefore not Q. Let me show you with another example. If you are a karate instructor, then you have a job. You are not a karate instructor, therefore you do not have a job. Well, that's plain stupid. You could be a karate instructor after all, and therefore have a job. Something else than a karate ins instructor, I mean. The propositional fallacy is pretty common in the field of data analysis. We'll take a usual uh, example from the coronavirus pandemic. Let's imagine we are looking for a treatment, and we believe that we found a drug that could, be the, that could do the trick. So we organize a clinical trial. A group gets the experimental drug, and the control group does not. What is the correct form of reasoning here? If we observe a significant decrease in death rates in our experiment, then it means that the drug is promising. The drug was proved to be ineffective, therefore we will not see any significant decrease. Uh, if you design your experiment well, this statement may be true. However, be very careful about how you phrase your statement. Because if you say the following, if we observe a significant decrease in death rates in our experiment, then it means that the drug is promising. We did not observe any decrease, therefore it means the drug is not promising. Then you are utterly wrong. Why so? Because it could be very well that the, ca the case that the drug could, be, could have an effect, but you did not apply it in the right conditions with the right people. Maybe you tested it on young people, but it's among people above 60 years old that it would have made the difference. With this simple mistake, you could be dismissing a drug that could have saved thousands, hundreds of thousands of lives. No, you have to do better than that, design new experiments. When it comes to data analysis, it's not uncommon to read things like, we could not find any occurrence of such an event, so we have to assume its opposite is the truth. You should remember, the absence of proof is not the proof of the absence. Forgetting that is pretty much what happened in the drug clinical trial example that we just discussed. And it is a fallacy, denying the antecedent. Keep it in mind.